Our movie today is a mysterious sci-fi from 2020 called Archive. The year is 2038, and George Almore, an AI scientist, is stationed in a Japanese compound in the middle of nowhere, tasked with a breakthrough robotic innovation. His only companions are robots he's invented, J1 and J2. J2, the second prototype, is watching her favorite cartoon and telling George about a dream she had in which they were driving a car. She doesn't recall much of the dream, but she does recall feeling sad when she awoke. Later that day, George speaks with Jules Almore, his wife, who appears to be sad. She tells him she can't talk to him anymore and hopes he's happy where he is. As the connection fades, Jules bids him farewell. We see a flashback where they're in a vehicle. As they become more intimate, Jules requests that he turns on the autopilot. George is skeptical because he did not design it. George talks to his employer, Simone. He hasn't shown them anything in two years, save for two failed robots. She tells him that he only has three years to complete his research. Simone concludes the call by instructing George to back up the system and protect the location. He informs J2 that limiting Simone's awareness of the two prototypes is preferable to having them shut down. J2 agrees and reassures J1 that she isn't as bad as the boss claims. Later, while working, he gets distracted by a video recollection of his wife. George works on a new prototype called J3, which has a female humanoid form. J2 surreptitiously watches him work. Later, as George and J2 are out fixing their receiving system, George notes that J2 is unusually silent. She questions him about why he refuses to let her assist him with his work, reminding him that they used to be a team. George assures her that the new prototype will not replace her. J2 remains uneasy. She observes a trend and knows she is superior to her sister, J1. George tries to leave the conversation and tells J2 to return home since it's chilly outdoors and the prototype could get wet. George returns to his station to put his third prototype together. He successfully implants artificial intelligence into her brain, but her system is still unable to properly comprehend it, since she is suddenly able to recall Jewel's memory. George comforts her and puts her into hibernation, to help her adjust and feel better when she wakes up. When George leaves the next morning, he is shocked to discover a dog at the door. He shoes the dog away and instructs their system to close the door. Unfortunately, it does not function. J2 claims to know nothing about it, but she appears happy when George asks for her assistance. A car parks while George and J2 repair the system. Sinclair and Melvin, archive company inspectors, approach them. George orders J1 and J2 to remain at their posts until the visitors have left. The two notify George that they wish to see the archiving machine for their customer. Sinclair speaks casually to him, but George is distracted by Melvin's work on the machine. Melvin discovers that the unit's security seals and environmental systems have been patched, but George grudgingly denies it and asks for a diagnostics test. Melvin is concerned and tells George that using the archive at home legally entails storing the deceased user's remains. They have a legal responsibility to remove the unit and prepare it for burial, after it has been used for personal purposes. George becomes enraged because he does not want his wife to depart yet. Melvin reminds him that if they discover he is breaking the rules, they must use force under the Post-Mortem Interment Act. George says that he has never done anything wrong and that the archiving firm is unable to intervene since they lack proof. When they depart, George knows they'll discover proof quickly, so he works around the clock to complete J3. He awakens her from hibernation, but she appears disturbed and exhausted. Before putting her back online, George soothes her and explains that he did this to lessen her trauma. She is perplexed, since she cannot recall anything, but George explains that her program is looking for patterns and piecing things together. He tells her that the technique is not perfect, but it is effective. The next day, once J3 has calmed down, George begins testing her taste senses by exposing her to other flavors such as vanilla and lime. He has her read various words. She is also put through an empathy test. When J3 inquires about the purpose of the test, George merely says that they would provide him with knowledge about her personality. J3 observes the scar on George's face. He reveals that it was caused by an accident. J3 then informs him that she has been dreaming a lot recently, but she isn't sure if she is dreaming or remembering. J1 eventually enters and presents herself to J3. George explains to her that J1 has mobility issues and that he didn't have enough time back then to create her arms, prompting J3 to feel bad and wonder if he is going to complete her. He also demonstrates J3's cognitive ability and discloses that J1 stopped developing between the ages of 5 and 6. He then utilized it as a blueprint for version 2, J2, and her brain ceased maturing around the age of 15 or 16. J2 is watching them on CCTV and listening to this confession. George displays a fully working brain figure that is hers. J2 is both jealous and alarmed. J2 destroys the basement gadgets while George is asleep. At the same time, George has flashbacks about his wife. George tells Jules that his employer has offered him a three-year contract of employment in which he would conduct solid research for three years and provide a deliverable prototype at the end. Jules congratulates him. George lets her down by taking an offer in Japan, leaving them in an awkward pause. 
George promises Jules that if she does not want him to, he will not take it. A vehicle slams into them out of nowhere. A loud alarm at his station awakens George from his nightmare. He discovers their window damaged and J3 vanished. George is still looking for J3 the next day. He searches the entire woodland with two drones, but comes up empty-handed. Then Jules arrives out of nowhere. They discuss new technology known as Archive. George informs her that Archive customers may anticipate up to 200 hours of face-to-face -face conversation with their departed loved ones. She wonders why he wants to talk to a someone who's already gone, and he says it so he can properly say goodbye. He goes on to say that he misses her. Jules, on the other hand, says she doesn't want to be stuck in a machine. Jules vanishes, while George is still looking for J3. George returns to the compound and searches his drawers for tools. Suddenly J3 drops on him. She is nervous and calls him a monster. He attempts to soothe her. He argues that J3's brain is not a computer, but it does have a biological element from which he can extract an analog signal and feed it into pattern recognition software. He eventually saw Jules' signs after a year of trying. He then constructed a personality template and began working on a physical form, which resulted in J1, J2, and now J3. He tells her that there will be no fourth prototype. After some discussion, he learns that J2 covertly took J3 into the document's room the night before. J2 informed her that she would be George's wife's successor in the future, and that George would build more advanced robots to replace her, just as J3 had now replaced J2. Finally, J2 locked her in the drawer. George confronts J2, who is feeling terrible and ashamed of her action. J2 says that all she wants is for J3 to know the truth without hurting his feelings, but George is so outraged that he switches her off and walks away. Later Simon calls, telling him that the archive company wants to discuss Jules. The corporation assumes that he based the two robots on their archive technology, and they want to investigate. Simon tells him that their investigation is private. However, the corporation is still threatening him with legal action. Their attorneys are investigating George's case, since he violated his confidentiality agreement by allowing people into the residence, which may be grounds for termination. A few days later, George has taken components from J2's legs and upgraded them. He gives them to J3 so she can walk. J2 asks about this, and George denies everything. On the days when J2 was shut down, George was actually working on the third prototype, in which he removed J2's legs and improved them. He delivered them to J3 and covered her in flesh. J3 now has a fully human shape, but J2 is dejected, used, and useless. J2 goes on lonely treks and frequently visits the waterfall, causing her to lose her power. J1 notifies George. However, when he examines J2, he finds no damage. J2 informs him that just because she has no physical injuries does not imply she is unharmed. George walks away, telling her they should chat when J2 is less emotional. George spends time with J3, and the two of them have a nice time laughing and dancing. J2 watches their love developing through the wall. She goes and pats J1, feeling sad and useless. J2 writes a goodbye letter and then heads to the lake, where she drowns herself, causing her circuitry to malfunction and her signal to be lost forever. George impatiently looks everywhere, until the computer says that it has also lost contact with J2. Even though he cannot discover her body, he buries J2's belongings and organizes a funeral for her in the evening. That night, J3 is given a portion of Jewel's memory data so they can be more intimate. J3 lays on George's bed, and George sees her as Jules, so he spends the night with her. When he opens his eyes, however, he recognizes the lady in front of him as J3, so he tells her to leave. The next day, glimpses of Jules' recollections flood J3's consciousness, a vehicle accident in which a police officer states that one archive machine is required for a deceased individual. J3 recalls Jules being pregnant as well. Simone phones George furiously later that day. The archiving firm located J2 at the bottom of the lake, proving that George took the company's data. Simone decides to dismiss him. He goes to disable all of the base's system. J3 answers the phone from Jules in the archive machine and tells her he cannot come to the phone right now and that she will take care of George after Jules is gone. Jules becomes perplexed because she doesn't get what J3 is saying. George takes the phone from J3 and tells Jules that it's complicated, but that he will see her shortly. J3 is taken aback by what she has heard, and it makes sense to her that George will implant Jules' archive within her. Finally, George informs J3 that he wants to replace her consciousness with Jules. J3 does not want to cease to exist, so she lashes out by saying Jules is already gone. She collapses, but then retrieves a pistol from a case. She questions him at gunpoint about what is going on and what the archiving firm wants. He claims they want to examine her and investigate what he has already done. She is bewildered by all this information. J3 tells him, feeling defeated, that she never had a chance. George apologizes, explaining that he made J3 because it is his responsibility that Jules is no longer alive, and that he built her so they could have the life they were intended to have together. J3 realizes George is no longer alive, and is fading within the archive. That component of George's consciousness will not go away. 
J3 desires George's awareness to end up happily with Jules, which is why she ultimately gives George permission to implant the archive into her, which he does instantly, because there is no more time. J3 regains consciousness and assumes the identity of Jules. For a little period, George is overjoyed, until the phone rings. George and his robots are being retrieved by the company's recovery team. George ultimately moves toward the ringing phone, which J3 tells him not to pick up, since reality is bitter. Nonetheless, he answers the phone and hears Jules' voice. She breaks into tears and tells George that the folks at the archive firm warned her that his awareness is about to go altogether and that this may be the final time she can reach him. George realizes he's already deceased and Jules is making his final call before he fades. George speaks with his daughter and says his final farewell. George's eyes well up with tears as he confronts the truth and completely vanishes. Jules hangs up and walks away with her daughter.